I spent so much time developing lace fabric for my wedding dress and I don't know why, I just had the impression that it just had to be super complicated. In my mind was clear, it cannot be a regular lace stitch. So I spent days playing with long stitches, which I was twisting, transferring, just trying to develop something new that I haven't done before. Some of the samples I created initially were very complex from a technical point of view, but the fabric was not actually pretty. For example, if you look at this fabric, this sample is very complex from a technical point of view, but let's be real, it doesn't look that pretty and it doesn't make so much sense. The yarn that I use for the dress is a dead stock yarn and it is this lovely acro color. It looks much yellower on camera than in real life. I only know that it's from a spinner called Cofil. And I'm assuming it's a blend between synthetic and natural fibers. I'm able to peel the yarn and can, I can see that it's made from two or three different fibers. And also I can tell from the way the fabric drapes, that is probably not a cotton, for example. Besides the stitch, another thing that I struggled deciding and kind of choosing was the shape of the top. And again, I had this impression that I have to overcomplicate everything. And initially I was um, working on a raglan sleeve which was very difficult actually, so in the end I decided to copy this top, which you might have seen a video of, um, I will link it below if you haven't, but this shape is a very, I believe a very flattering shape on me. It's not really a vest, but it's not a t-shirt, and it doesn't have sleeves, which makes it super easy to knit. I'm glad that I chose a simple shape in the end. There is beauty and simplicity, and at the end of the day, I'm not someone who likes fancy stuff. I'm quite simple myself, so it was the perfect choice for me. So this should have been my first wedding dress, and as you can tell, it is a little bit too loose for me, and the neckline came out way too deep. So when I knitted this, I tried to kind of fix it. I tried to crochet around it to see if I can pull in the, the neckline a little bit to make it fit better, but it didn't work, so I just decided to re -knit it. At that point, I was kind of chill. I still had a lot of time, so um, it worked for the best. I used this to measure the next top, which came out the right size. Another thing that I did not like about the first top was that I left too many stitches or plain stitches at the edges or where I had increased. So that was the extra reason that pushed me to re -knit it. For the second top, I formed eyelets as close to the edge as possible. And you can see here, I think it looks so much better. This is a very common practice in the knitwear industry. The first sample rarely comes the right size. So you can see here that I was taking measurements from the first top, thinking a lot and trying to recalculate everything to make sure that the next one comes out the right size. It is time to knit the front panel. For this panel I had to cast on 85 stitches and that is 20 stitches less than the top I knitted first. I'm just mentioning this information so you can have an idea on how the drastic the change had to be so that the second top fitted me perfectly. If you like the stitch as well and you are curious on how it is done, I will share a video with on my Patreon which will come in the next couple of weeks. I'm really proud of this stitch, it is very simple but also quite unique. When it comes to the shape for the front panel, you have seen this shape on my channel before, if you watched this video. That video was a test of this shape actually, as at that time I wanted to try to see how it would look knitted on my machine. Here is the front panel taken off the machine, ready to be steamed. It doesn't look like much freshly taken off the machine. That's why blocking is so important when it comes to some lace fabrics. I'm trying to use as much steam as possible here and not press too hard on the fabric. These panels will also be washed and then pinned to dry. I did a full needle cast on for all the panels, then transferred all stitches from riverbed to main bed using the transfer carriage. For the back panel, I knitted two panels. My main wish was to create a very deep V. To shape the panel was very simple as well. I increased in the same way I did for the front on the outer edges and then I decreased on the opposite side to produce this shape. 
after leaving a small section straight where I was going to place little buttons to close the back. The reason why I did not knit the back in one single piece was so that I don't need to put it on and off over my head as this will just make it stretch and ruin the shape. So this is something you might want to consider as well when creating knitted pieces that are quite fitted. Like I mentioned before, I washed and then blocked all the three panels for the top and I did that before sewing the panels together. This is not always the case, sometimes I wash my garments after being put together, it really depends on the stitch. The next step was to do the shoulder seam, which I don't have a clip of, but I used a needle and the yarn and I tried to make the seam as flat as possible by grabbing the cast on chain. Before doing the side seam, I did one row of single crochet around both the front and the back necklines. I also spent probably an entire day developing scallops design. I really wanted it to not look too solid in comparison to the knitted fabric. Here you can see the two first rows. I created a small chain scallop and then one row of single crochet around it, followed by, I think it's called a puff stitch, but I'm not entirely sure, with three chains in between. And lastly, one single crochet all around. I think it came super cute and added that just extra detail to the neckline. And yes, my kitten sleeps on my lap every day. She is the cuddliest baby. Here we have the first fit check. At this point, I still wanted the dress to be two piece, so top and skirt. It seemed that the back was a little bit too loose. That was not making me stress at that point, even though it was making the top fall off the shoulders. I just thought that I probably could fix that, which in the end I did. Moving on to the skirt part, I initially wanted to make the skirt from woven fabric, but I soon realized that it just had to be knitted. It was first of all impossible for me to find a fabric that is the exact same color as the yarn, so that the top and skirt are the same color. And I just started to feel that if the skirt was going to be woven, then the whole dress was not going to be special enough or as special as it would have been if it was completely knitted. And also I'm a knitter, so it just had to be knitted. I'm sharing my entire thought process so you can see how different the dress came to what I initially envisioned or wanted. Even though the top was made from three panels, which are shaped and partially knitted and all that, it took me about one long day to knit it and it probably took me longer to crochet around the neckline, so the knitting was not very time consuming. When it comes to the skirt part, it's a very different story. The skirt is formed from three panels, which are 160 stitches and 400 rows, so each of them, and it took me about probably three days per panel, and yes, it hurt my back very much. To join the skirt panels together I used the crochet hook. I initially wanted to do it using a mattress stitch but I thought this method was going to give me more structure to the seam. Here are the three panels after being sewn together. The next step was to gather the skirt. To do that I began with one single crochet around the cast of edge and that already started to pull it in a little bit. I continued with a few more rows until it came to the right size so it can fit my waist perfectly and it took me a couple of tries to get it right. Again, I tried to make the crochet look as open as possible to match the rest of the fabric. As you can observe, of course, the fabric is very, very see-through. So I kind of knew from the beginning that I needed to create some kind of a lining or something to go underneath so it's not so see-through, obviously. And I had purchased some fabric. Um, which I wanted to use to create a skirt and also I wanted to put something um, underneath the top as well. 
So once I finished the skirt, which took me about three days because I needed to do two layers anyway, I realized that I couldn't use the same fabric for the top as well because it didn't have any give. So when I put it underneath, it just felt very constricting and it was not comfortable at all. So you will see my face in the next clip. It says it all. It was not good. That's what I'm saying. It was not good. I honestly, I don't even know why I even attempted that. I just thought that if I put the woven fabric underneath and then I put the knitted lace on top, it was going to be alright. I have tried in the past to kind of combine woven and knitted fabric and I said to myself I was never going to do that again. This is kind of different but still. The problem was that the skirt looked really really lovely with the fabric underneath and I kind of just wanted to make it work for the top too so that they are the same color. I'm sharing this part and this mistake in a way, as this was the point where I kind of started to regret choosing to make my dress. The wedding was fast approaching and I just picked in some windows with wedding dresses in some shops in my city. I don't think I could have found something that was simple enough for me. In the end, I just had to make it work. Gladly it worked because I don't know what I would have done otherwise. After that, I had decided that the top didn't actually need any fabric underneath, so just a skin color bra would be enough and I'm giving here a shout out to Intimissimi. They have really good bras that can kind of wrap around your body so you don't see them at the back at all and the lining underneath the skirt to be a similar color to my skin as well just like the bra. Then the color of the top and the skirt was not going to be different. I haven't filmed many clips after that so I don't have a video showing how I joined the top and the skirt. But to do that I did one row of single crochet on the hem of the top and then I joined with a single crochet the bottom and the top. That was the point when it all started to look promising and it just started to look right. I think the dress is more complete and much more beautiful by being a whole piece rather than a top and a skirt. And that crochet waistband on the skirt just held everything in place. Fastened the back I added seven little pearl buttons as I was going to have pearl accessories as well and a hook and eye for the skirt to close it nicely which I have sewn the morning of the wedding of course that's why it looks so bad but that was fun I hope that seeing my journey of making my own wedding dress will inspire you to make yours as well or will actually make you be sure that you don't want to overall I'm happy with how my dress turned out and I wore it with pride in the day I'm mostly proud that I finished it and I made it and I will definitely treasure it forever. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy seeing the journey or the process of making my wedding dress. Like I mentioned before, I will upload a video with a stitch on my Patreon if you want to check it out. And that's all. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye.